Welcome to Kinnick. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to diagnose a Mercedes uh, hybrid. So here we have a 2010 S400. The reason why I want to do this uh, video is because quite frequently we get uh, even repair shops and technicians and mechanics from all over the world and they, they say, hey, uh, I have a hybrid and the car does not start. In some cases, they'll say, oh, I don't have any fault codes. And yes, that can be true. Like there might not be any fault codes and still the car doesn't start because there's some very important things that are going on with the hybrid system that you need to check uh, in order um, to verify if the engine is gonna start. So here we're gonna take a look. We're using the Ucanic scanner. This is a full system scanner. that's able to read and clear codes for basically any control module, any make and model. So select Mercedes there, we do smart VIN go back I don't want to manually enter the make and model so we'll read the VIN and that's gonna automatically pick the correct make and model so right here uh, let's take a look at control modules now there's a uh, in this vehicle is over 50 control modules so they're um, divided in categories so e under each one of these categories, you're gonna have a, a number of control modules so you can read clear codes from that look at live data, which we're gonna do, but just for the hybrid system, because we're not gonna go through over 50 control modules. But if you did quick scan, it's gonna go through all the control modules and it's gonna tell you if there's any fault codes on them. And then you can click a little arrow right here that allows you to uh, take a quick peek of what those codes are. So you just scan the engine control unit and you can see there's a lot of codes on that one. And then it goes through the transmission, airbag, and again, it goes through all 50 control units that are gonna be in this car. But we're only um, interested in the hybrid system. So we're just gonna take a look at that. So let's go back here. I'm gonna exit this and we're gonna manually select the control modules. And there's four control modules we're gonna look at. And then the first one we're gonna look at is the engine control unit or motor electronics, how Mercedes calls it. But this is what uh, basically it's the main, one of the main control units in the vehicle that monitors the engine and a lot of other systems. So we're gonna read the codes from that. And then here we gotta look very carefully. Now there's a lot of codes, some of them are stored. Generally you don't wanna, you're not gonna worry about the stored ones. Um, but um, in this case we can see communication with Control unit electric machine A has a malfunction and then the same code over here. Those two codes are current. Electric machine is the electric motor basically that's located right behind the engine, uh, typically where your torque converter will go. So uh, it's basically between the you know, engine and the transmission. So that's the electric machine. Now saying you can't not communicate with that. Uh, right on the side of the um, uh, engine there, there's the power electronic module that basically connects to the electric motor. And a lot of times it's not an electric motor that goes bad, but it's the power electronic module. That's what typically fails on these. Um, electric, uh, electric motor is very unlikely to fail. So here is, this right here is the power electronic module. This is the part that mounts on the side of the engine and connects to the electric motor. And um, sometimes you might have codes in here Sometimes if you don't, you cannot communicate with this module, that's another uh, indication that uh, that module is faulty. Sometimes you might have codes in here, sometimes you might not. If you somebody clear the codes, then these codes won't come up uh, until, uh, uh, they won't come up because the car cannot be started and it cannot be tested. So uh, that's another thing that, uh, but you wanna check the codes in there. You're gonna, typically you're gonna have a couple of fault codes that indicate problems communicating with the electric motor basically uh, next we want to go to body and we'll scroll down and we're going to check battery management control system so a lot of problems um, we want to read codes from the BMS basically want to see what's going on here and you can see th the same code that we saw in the engine control unit is also here because also the uh, BMS or the battery hybrid battery is trying to come connect um, to that electric motor and it cannot. So it says stored and current. 
Um, we have a few other issues, uh, system shut off, but these codes can typically, uh, if there's an internal fault, you know, the hybrid battery will um, shut down. But you can try clearing these codes. Uh, the one that's a current issue, that's not gonna clear, it's gonna come right back. Uh, these ones, if the problem persists, this will come back as well. Uh, but let's look at live data. This is very important. So we're in the BMS on the battery management system. We click on live data, general actual values. And this is where some very important uh, data that we need to look at. Uh, this streams basically all the values from the hybrid battery. We can see the charge level is 54%. Um, that's good. Uh, charge level, uh, one time I had a mechanic that called us and I charged the battery to hundred uh, percent and my car still doesn't charge and charging the battery to a hundred percent doesn't really mean anything as long as you are above 28 percent really above 30 percent uh, then you're fine that hybrid battery is going to fluctuate really between 30 and 80 most of the time as you drive it and you don't need to be at a hundred percent or even 80 or 70 percent for that hybrid battery to start the engine you got to be above 30 and that's all that matters but once you, you're above 30 then and the car doesn't start, we gotta look at other issues, okay? So voltage, uh, of, you can see here, we're reading 128 volt. Uh, amperage uh, of a high voltage battery right now, this negative value, meaning that a little bit of current is being drawn out of that uh, hybrid battery. That's not much, 0 0.16, that's normal right there. Uh, we keep going down, starter for contactors. We have another video where we explain contactors, but what those do is every time you turn off the key, uh, the key or the car, um, the contactors get, uh, it's like a main switch inside the hybrid battery that disconnects the whole hybrid system so that there's no issue with um, somebody getting injured or uh, you don't want to keep the high voltage system connected to the all components when the car is parked or when somebody's working on it. So closed means those are connected in the hybrid system, it's all, uh, connected so if there's an issue these are going to stay open they're going to show open uh, and open means that the basically the hybrid battery is not um, connecting sending power to the other components including an electric machine uh, let's keep going start of interlock uh, circuit this interlock circuit is a little there's basically connectors throughout the hybrid system that uh, just they, they're designed and they're put there so that somebody works on these cars and they forget to connect those then um you're going to have an interlock interlock circuit and you're going to have fault here which means the car will not start you might not have any issues at all but if you didn't connect something correctly you're going to have a fault there and um and now here's another one that this is a very common issue and isolation uh, re isolation resistant so what this does is the hybrid system is a completely separate circuit than the 12 volt and they gotta stay that way. So the car, when you first turn on the ignition, does a really quick check for less than a second. Uh, make sure it tests their resistance. Is there enough resistance between the high voltage on this side and the 12 volt? And it says, yeah, there's a lot of resistance. So there's no, there's no way for a current to flow from the high voltage to the low voltage. You don't want that. You'll damage circuits, plus you'll get injured. So there's high voltage you got to have high voltage so that means the two uh, circuits are operating independently on each other that value sometimes when there's an issue with the one of the components of the hybrid system goes to under one mega ohm so it's got to be over a thousand uh kilo ohms or one mega ohm um and right now it's at five thousand but as long as you are above a thousand then you're fine typically it should be normal range is five thousand but the car is not going to throw you a code or it's not going to prevent engine start if you are above a thousand but if you are under a thousand what the car is going to do is going to say no 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 there is the high voltage system is uh, basically connected to the chassis of the car which we don't want that because we're going to injure someone so let's not uh, shut off the hybrid system do not start the car so that's a really common issue and sometimes you might not get a code for that it's typically the the uh, the BMS, the battery management system, is going to throw a code for that, but not always. Here is another one, uh, and this is also a little tricky one as well. Remaining switching cycles of a contactor. So that main switch, basically, that's inside the hybrid battery, uh, the contactors, uh, it's really a big relay, technically, and um, that's designed to 
handle large voltage and current. So that the BMS will monitor how many times that turns on and off, how many cycles it has had. And uh, sometimes it started 200,000 and it goes down, 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 down until it reaches zero. Once it reaches zero, the, the battery says it's too old and you cannot use it anymore. So I've had this, I've seen this where uh, the, this reaches zero basically and it's got to be it, this number has got to be higher over a hundred thousand ideally um so that's another problem with these hybrids that uh, uh, the counter for the contactors reaches zero and then that battery does will no longer work so this is uh, this is where we were under the bms so if i go back here this is the bms um uh, bms uh, battery management control unit so you'd go to bms and then live data and then general actual values and then you see all the values from the battery this is very important to check the health of that hybrid system and the last one is dc dc converter this is what takes the 12 volt and can convert it back to 120 or high voltage like 126 or 130. Uh, we can read codes here because this is part of the hybrid system so if there is an issue with this, then uh, your hybrid system might not work. And here we have communication control, combustion engine has a malfunction. And, um, uh, but this sometimes, a lot of times will we'll get triggered by the issue that we have with the power electronic module. So we've got a couple of store codes, we can try clearing them. And then, um, but the, in this card, the main issue, for example, is the power electronic module that we saw the codes in the engine control unit and uh, lastly um, these vehicles do have uh, ac but ac is run by the hybrid system and so if there is an issue on the ac control uh, ac uh, compressor basically then your hybrid system will not work uh, sometimes um, and the really common problem with this is pre-charged circuit uh, it's taking too long uh, which what that is is basically that you have the high voltage battery and you have all the components of the high voltage system ac compressor power electronic model, dc dc control unit all these systems have to be brought up to high voltage before the contactors which is inside the battery connects power to it if you don't you have high voltage on one side you have no voltage on the other side of the high voltage circuit and then you end up with sparks it's the same as like when you connect jumper cables um, or a jump box to a car that's completely dead. You end up with a lot of sparks because there's a lot of current flowing. But uh, pre-charge basically brings up all the uh, the other end of the um, hybrid system. Uh, the voltage brings it, brings it up. So when the hybrid battery connects to all these other components, um, and there is no um, there's no sparks inside that uh, inside the battery because that's where a connection is made. And uh, if pre-charge, if it takes too long to bring the voltage up on the on the high voltage system then what's going to happen is that uh, you're going to end with a fault code in the um, battery management system bms that says pre-charge is taking too long that's another common issues with hybrid vehicles uh, not a problem on this one but we see that quite a bit on on these vehicles and sometimes the problem with that one it could be it's very tricky to um, troubleshoot because the problem could be the battery itself that's where the connection is made and what that's where the computer the bms the brains of the hybrid battery are inside the hybrid battery so um, yeah, that's where the connection is made but the problem is that you might have electrical issues elsewhere in one of the other components and that's why you end up with a pre-charge fault code the common one is a dc dc converter has issues or it's not being it doesn't have enough power to bring the uh, to bring the voltage up to 120 or 130 volts uh, fast enough so uh, that's a, that's a tricky one that we see quite a bit as well but that's it thank you for watching mechanic where you can be the mechanic